Welcome to the Missouri Wind and Solar Podcast. Thanks for downloading the podcast. I'm your host, Wes Shank, and I'm here today with our co-host and general manager, David McDerris. Each week, we review the latest and greatest happenings in wind and solar and how they'll impact you and your alternative energy products. If you'd like more information about anything you've heard on this podcast or any of our other podcasts, check out our education resources at windandsolar.com, including links to well over 300 YouTube videos now. Or better yet, feel free to reach out to our Seymour, Missouri-based sales team at 417-708-5359. And you can also email them at sales at windandsolar.com. They'll get back with you from there. And if you really want to go in-depth, come to our hands-on workshop in Seymour, Missouri. And you can get all the details on that on our website, windandsolar.com. And even one step better, as Mr. McDerris is sitting here with me today, you would be able to have him teach you in that workshop and learn about Pukert's Law there. And we actually even had to go do a quick Google search on how to pronounce Pukert's Law. (laughs) So I'm going to spell it since we're on the podcast. So if you want to go search for it, you can find it. It's P-E-U-K-E-R-T-T Pukert. And that's Right. Whose law it is. Yep. So let's talk about that, David. How does this come into play in your alternative energy environment? Okay. So how this is going to come into play, we're not going to get well into the weeds on C ratings and all that, but let's just say we have a battery that's a 12 volt battery and a 10 amp hour battery. We're going to keep it very small here. So if I took 12 times 10, so voltage times amperage equals wattage gives me a 120 watt battery. And that battery was designed to dispel over a 20 hour period to release that energy evenly over a 20 hour period. Okay. That's how it was designed. So that means it could give over 20 hours. It could give six Watts an hour continuously every hour until the battery was fully drained. Now we wouldn't want to do that anyway, but that's a different subject, but it's designed that it could do that, that it could maintain that for that time. So when we design a system, that's how we design it. So it is designed to evenly dispel a certain amount of energy for the rate of 20 hours. And that's the C rating that we choose. That's the 0.5. But some people will say, well, what if I needed to use 12 watts an hour over 20 hours? Would I not just need to double my battery bank? The math seems sound there, right? It seems like it's a sound math. Okay, yeah, but it's not. And that's where Pukrik's Law comes in and says that if you try to The more energy you try to pull from a battery, the faster the discharge rate is going to happen. So instead of being able to go 10 hours, so if we just kept it back at that 120 watts and saying, well, I'm going to pull 12 watts out for 10 hours, it would never reach 10 hours. It would get to about 7.5 hours, seven and a half hours, and it would shut off. It would be out of energy. And so if you did that, I mean, if you're actually have critical loads on your unit, they're going to shut off well before their intended time to shut off. So what this is kind of like, if I'm understanding this right, it's kind of like miles per gallon on your car. Exactly. So if you go 50 miles an hour, you're going to get a different MPG MPG than if you drive 75 miles an hour. That's correct. That's 100% correct. So if you have the exact same amount of energy in the tank, which is gasoline in the tank, and you drive at 75 miles an hour, you won't get as far down the road on the same tank of gas as you would by driving 50 miles an hour down the road. You would get to the point of 75 mile an hour takes you faster, but the old turtle and the slow and steady wins the race would pass you as you were filling up. He would pass you and go beyond you. So some of our clientele would definitely know that because if you watch NASCAR, that's definitely what they have to do. You know, if they back off, they're conserving their fuel so they don't have to make that one extra pit stop in and they can get around. And so that guy that's just a little bit slower can sometimes actually end up winning the race because he doesn't have to pit one more time in the same way in your battery bank. If I don't have to pit one more time, I may not have to buy that extra battery. You know, So if I can slow that down and use the batteries as they were designed and not pedal to the metal, then I can actually get through a longer period of time. So 
Okay. So you kept referencing the C rating. Yeah. And you're like, we don't want to get in the weeds. You know, that's kind of, <laughs> that's, that's we what get. we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what does that stand for to begin with? So the C rating on a battery is going to be exactly what we've just kind of talked about. It's going to be the time frame that the battery is designed to dispel that amount of energy that's in it that it's rated for and be able to maintain that for the entire length of the battery's life. Okay. So this is something that the manufacturer the manufa- calculates. Yes. The manufacturer said- calculates it. And so when you look at a battery, for instance, it's going to have, usually you're going to see the amp hour ratings, right? And that is the C rating. It's just not put because people don't understand the C rating. If they start putting 0.5 and then one and then two, then 10, then 20, that doesn't mean very much to them. But when they start saying amp hours, capable of amp hours, well, that you'll see that the amp hours goes down. So if we were to grab a battery, it would say it right on it. And you'll see as the amp hours increase, the wattage decreases. I mean, it just plays one for one. And so basically, they're already bringing Putrix Law into it. They know this. They designed the battery this way. So if you were going with that, in our example, you were talking about 10 amps at 12 volts. Right. 120, 120 watts. watts. Yeah. So so the amp hours would be the C rating on that. The correct. That is and correct. And so they've established, and what would be a normal amp hours? You say A normal amp hour, the only one we use is the 0. 0.5. Okay. So what does that work out to as it's far as? It's 20 hours. So that would be 20 hours. 20 hours, yep. And so where did the 20 hours come from? The 20 hours came from, in the renewable energy field, is... And the reason they use 20 hours versus 24 hours is the charging. There's going to be four hours of charging during the day. I mean, almost everywhere there's four hours of charging during the day. So the C rating has to, you're actually putting energy into the battery and using energy at the same time that's being made from the solar panel. Like at your house, for instance, Wes, you've got literally 15K coming in and you may be using 5K of it, but the other 10K is charging the battery. So we're not really worried about that four hours that that's happening on. So in our example, where we've got the 120 watts, it's going to be able to discharge only that 120 watts. Over 20 hours. Over 20 hours. Yeah. So, so basically you're talking six watts six an hour. Six watts an hour. Okay. Constant. And then what you're doing then is, are you programming the inverter not to exceed that? Or well, are you just saying if it exceeds it, yeah. Sucks to be you. You're going to. That is the unfortunate deal. The inverters are not programmed that way, right? So there's not an inverter you can say, okay, I only take six watts an hour. They just don't do that. There's not inverters out there that do that. So that is where it's so critical that either we design or you know how to okay. design your system. But like in my properly. system, when it sees the batteries get to a critical point, it'll turn itself off. Right. It'll turn itself off. Right. But you could take and all you could, you could, 20 of those in five minutes if you want. That's to. right. That's right. And the deal is there again, like I just said, that 120 watts in five minutes, you know, that would be a very excessive load. But for what you're designing. Right. For, for what you. you're designing. So when we design that system, we design it to dispel that energy over that 20 hour period because we never want it to run out. And so anytime you start having big surges and surges don't really have an effect on it, but constant draw is what we're worried about. Yeah. And so when I say constant draw, like if a well pump was to kick yeah, on you've decided and constantly to go, draw. You could go you water know. the garden for five right. hours. And we didn't design it to water the garden for five <laughs> hours. Then you have issue. It can even be played out at that. Because every battery is designed, like on the C rating, for instance. Let's take that 120-watt battery we just talked about. If it's a C rating of 0.5, it can only dispel energy of 60 watts continuously to begin with for an hour at any given time. So the inverter, the most it, so energy, it, couldn't, it, can, take it couldn't take 120, 120 uh, because the battery can't do that. It can't dispel energy that fast. It can only do half of that. So it will only be able to do the 60 watts is all it could do. So when it can only do 60 watts, you know, and if you needed to had an appliance that needed so, 120 watts, well, okay. you immediately have to well, parallel battery into that. Well, where do you find that out from? Because again, the good question guy here. Yeah. How do yeah. you know what your spigot can handle then? I mean, is it just It's half? just going to be, the, it's going to be the math of, I mean, is really what it's going to be like on lithium, for instance, a lot of things are said about the 80% DOD, but the biggest deal on the lithium is, is it's pretty much just like any other battery. It's almost just half. Like the Simplify, for instance. Remember the Simplifier 3.8 kilowatt batteries? 
the usable wattage per day out of them is 3,000 watts, and that would keep it at 80% DOD. You could take it to a 3.8 kilowatt. It's going to, the BMS is going to shut the battery off. Same way in your e yeah. it's going to shut the battery off. Even like on your e that are 18.4 kilowatts, they only can dispel 9,000 watts of energy at one given time. So like on your Solar, if you had a Solar 12K, for instance, it's a 9,000 watt inverter and that's all it can do. So let's just say that you have that 9,000 watt inverter from the Solar. It's a 9,000 watt inverter. It's capable of surging 18,000 watts. But if you only have one battery on there, I don't care what is capable of surging. It's only ever going to give you 9,000 watts. That's all it can do because that's all the battery can do. So, I mean, like literally it can't pass more wattage across the terminals. Right, right. Where but, the Simplify is 1.9 well, is uh, that, or 1,900 watts. Is that limited by the manufacturer or is that just the way batteries work? That's just work? the way batteries work. They just okay. can't do it. It can't give up all of its energy nope, in one just boom. can't do it. And as you're designing battery and designing your system, Another thing you have to be mindful of, uh, and this is something I teach in the class, and I'm not going to go very deep into it because you want to hear more of it, you got to come to my class. So <laughs> the old analogy would be if I have a four-inch inlet and a four-inch outlet going out of two barrels and I've got to connect the barrels together and I put a one-inch connector between them, after the barrel on the far side where the outlet is goes down, I'll only ever be able to get one inch of flow back out of that four inch pipe. I'll never get any more out of that because I limited it just because of the flow rate from battery one to battery two. It's very, very critical that you make sure that you have the proper cables connecting your batteries together so you can keep that flow rate even. So Okay. Well, what else do we need to talk about, Bukert? You know, <laughs> it, it, the major deal is, and we, we're seeing this a lot now as people are, uh, they're putting in lithium batteries and that's great. Lithium batteries come with a higher upfront cost, and so they're limiting the amount of batteries that they're buying and maybe not buying the full set and trying to run it. Basically, they're trying to take a half-ton truck and pull a 30-foot gooseneck stock trailer with it. It doesn't work, you know. Yeah, you can't fudge on these. You've, you've got to buy that one ton. I mean, I'm sorry, you know, you've just got to use it as it's designed, and we're starting to see that, and we're starting to see people not last through the night like they thought they would because they thought, well, I will get this extra one, but when really they needed three because there again, you're losing anywhere from 10 to 50%, depending on how fresh you're trying to drain that energy out of there, you know? And then overall, as different companies have come to the market and some of this stuff is easier to get now, there's just not the support out there. They're just buying willy nilly off the shelf and then they're having huge trouble that this stuff's just not working. And it's not the equipment's fault. It's the installation and the size of the design. The yeah. design and who it's puts it together yeah. like that. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we got this one down? That's it. All right. Well, thanks for tuning into the podcast and check out some more of our podcast at windandsolar.com. Thank you for downloading and listening to the podcast today. If you have a question you'd like to hear us discuss on the podcast or just want to say hello, email us at radio at windandsolar.com. As always, check out our store at windandsolar.com and buy some stuff. Your financial support underwrites our educational outreach like the podcast YouTube channel, and local STEM collaboration. It also keeps Lucy and her doggy chicken treats. Thanks again for listening.